I turn your Bibles, if you would, please, to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. The title of this message this morning is Into the Heavenlies. <coughs> Into the Heavenlies. Praise God. <coughs> Excuse me. Ephesians chapter 1, and I want to begin with verse 1. For Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. I want to stop there for a moment and expound on the fact that Paul is writing this to the faithful. Now, if you're not faithful, this isn't for you. <laughs> but if you're faithful, this is for you. If you're not faithful, you can get faithful, and then it can be for you. You see, if a person's not faithful, there's no way they can understand anything else. There's no way they can go beyond even that place right there. They're going to struggle to know the depths of God's Word, to know the depths of the things of the kingdom of God. And Paul says here, and to the faithful which are in Christ Jesus. You see, folks, listen to this now. Please hear what I'm saying to you. And I already sense the presence of the Lord. God, God has something to say. God has something to say. And I believe God is speaking louder today than He ever has before He came. Jesus Christ, when He walked the face of the earth, He spoke loud. But I'm telling you what, in these last days, in these last times, folks, I believe God has something to say. Oh. Right. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. And of all the voices that are taking place around the world today, and all the voices that are being sounded, and every, everybody, you know, it's just like everybody's got a navel, everybody's got an opinion. You know, and every opinion comes out. You know what I'm saying? Some of us, we have innies. Some of us have outies. Those of us who have innies, we keep our opinions to ourselves. Those of you who have outie button, buttons, you know, you express your opinions. And we just assume you had innies and not outies. <laughs> Same. You know, God has something to say. But he has something, listen now, he has something to say about himself. About himself. Not really about anything else. If you're here this morning and you're seeking the will of God for your life, set that aside because what God wants to speak to you about the will of God for your life is Himself. Himself. Get Himself situated first and correctly. And you know what, folks? It takes a lifetime to achieve that. It takes a lifetime to achieve that. Get him situated correctly, then we can hear his voice because he has something he wants to say to you and I about himself, you see. That is specifically, however, that's specifically for you. God has something he wants to say about himself specifically for you as an individual person. Now, I want to encourage you to make it personal. Make it personal. Your relationship with God isn't about just the church. Your relationship with God isn't just about your family. Your relationship with your God isn't about the things that we do for God or we want to do for God or the things that we don't do that are naughty. No. Make your personal relationship with Jesus Christ personal. Because He has something He wants to speak and do in you specifically for you about Himself. See, folks, 25, 30, 35, 40 years ago, I was all about achieving. I was all about doing. I was all about receiving awards. I was always about gaining and growing. I was always about the future. I was always about... What, are, what are we, can we do next that's greater for God? And then, and then when we did that greater thing for God, then, then we achieved higher than that. And, and, then we, and then we achieved higher than that. And, and then we achieved higher than that. And then there was a point where that God spoke and God ministered in my life and in my wife's life. And he said, no more of getting higher and higher and higher. It's time now to go down a little bit deeper and deeper and deeper. And to go deeper and deeper, just like we sang this morning, that may mean for some time you're going to stop achieving higher and higher.
Because if you're going to grow in me, you've got to go deeper and deeper. Yeah. Hallelujah. You've got to go deeper and deeper. Praise God. You see, make it personal. Brother Chevy, when you stand before the Lord, you're not going to go to heaven with you and your family. You can call upon your family. You can say to your wife, well, Tony, did you hear that? When the trumpet of the Lord sounds, I believe I'm going to have a split moment. You're going to have a split moment to call out to all of your loved ones and say, did you hear that? For the voice of the Lord is going to shout with the voice of the archangel. And then the trumpet of the Lord is going to sound. Folks, that's going to take a few moments. And I believe my ears are attuned to those voices. And my ear is in tune to that trumpet sound. And when I hear it, I'm going to call out to my family members. I'm going to call out to them that they hear it. And then I'm going to be taken away. But when I stand before the Lord, my children and my family aren't going to be behind me. They have their own place. When it comes time for Jesus Christ to call my name as he looks through the Lamb's book of life. And next up, let's see. Well, he was a little squirrely, so we've got a lot to account for. Daryl Joseph Stavro, step forward, please. This is going to take some time. <laughs> Chevy Boo, please step forward. This is, this is going to be difficult. <laughs> but please step forward. You know what I'm saying? Make it personal. Make it personal in your prayer time. Make it personal in your worship time. Make it personal in your Bible reading time. Yes. Discover what he wants to say about himself for you specifically. And less about what he wants you to do for him. Yes. That will come in time. Can you say amen? Now turn your Bibles. I want to look at this story real quick. Because it emphasizes this point. Turn to Genesis. Keep your Bible, your finger right there. We're coming back to Ephesians. Turn to Genesis chapter 15. And I want to look at uh, Abraham just for a moment. Because this exemplifies Abraham's life. Okay? Now, we pick it up. Genesis chapter 15 and verse 1. Now understand that, that, that Abraham had now come out of come out of his land. He had left his family, he had left his land, so to speak, and now he had been walking with God for quite some time. Okay? God called Abraham out of Chaldees, and he said, come on, Abraham, I'm going to make a great nation out of you, and I'm going to send you to a land flowing with milk and honey. Well, I've got news for you something, folks. Now listen to this now. You see, where Abraham was living was already flowing with milk and honey. Okay? But now God said to Abraham, I'm going to take you to another place. And I'm going to create from you a great nation. Now it had been some time. Well, we don't know how long. Could have been months. Could have been a couple of years. Whatever. But Abraham now had walked with God for a little bit. So now let's look at chapter 15 beginning with verse 1. And after these things the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision saying, Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Now look at verse 2. And Abraham said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me? Seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. You see, basically, now we can put some meat on that bone. And, um, no, and let's look at verse 3. And Abraham said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. You see, Abraham is now kind of complaining to God walking with God, but doing everything that God has told him to do, you know, and he's obedient to God, and that's great. And, and now all of a sudden, that, you know, Abraham's getting a little disgruntled. He's, he's getting a little disgruntled about this whole process because even at Christmas, what he left was pretty good. And now what he, what, where, he, where he's going right now, he's not, not getting much. He's not getting any more than what he had before. And so Abraham's getting a little bit disgruntled. And so God says, well, you know what? I better speak to Abraham because I don't want him to get, you know, discouraged or frustrated. So God said, you know what, Abraham? I'm your shield and I'm your exceeding great reward and you need to just keep on, just brother, just keep on going. I've called you, just keep on going. And so Abraham says, wait a minute now. Okay, I, I don't have any seed. Let's keep going. Let's read verse four. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him saying, this shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth aboard and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. 
And he believed the Lord, that's Abraham, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Now you see, folks, Abraham, God had to make this personal, and Abraham had to make this call on his life personal. Because what I'm doing right now just doesn't seem to me to be getting it done. So God said, Abraham, I'm your shield, and I'm your great reward. Abraham, the call that I've put on your life, you now need to make it more personal than you ever have before. You see, and when we make it personal between us and God, we will then hear, hear the voice speak to us in personal terms that we can relate to. You see, Abraham, I'm going to expound on it later in just a few moments, but Abraham could relate to the promise of God. You see, what Abraham wanted more than anything. Uh, let me just get to it right now. Abraham was already a rich man. Abraham already had land and cattle. He was a rich man of silver and gold and cattle and donkeys. He was a very rich man. God speaks to him. Abraham, I want you to come out of there. I want you to walk forward. And I'm going to make a great nation with you. Don't ask where you're going. Just do what I tell you and everything will be fine. Well, okay, God. So Abraham starts walking. And it was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. And then there comes this point in time where Abraham says, you know what? I have it really good back there. Plenty of silver, plenty of gold, plenty of animals, plenty of land. What's the deal? I don't see that this is any better than there. God said, okay, now Abraham, you need to make my word that I speak to you personal. Now it's no longer, it's no longer about direction. Listen, you guys, stop, stop asking God for direction. Daryl Stavro, stop asking God for direction and just listen to his voice about himself. And when I hear his voice about himself, I'll automatically know what direction I'm supposed to go. Yes. Yeah. And so this is Abraham. And you see, and you see, he made it personal. He made it personal so that, so that Abraham then could trust, could trust what God had said. And so God wants us to be able to trust what he says when we make it personal. If you make it about a family member, that's not personal. If you make it about your job, that's not personal. If you make it about where you live or what you're doing or, you know, here or there or retirement, or, that's not personal. What needs to be personal, supposed to be, is the voice of God that speaks to us in terms that we can relate to just like Abraham did. Now let's continue on. All right, now keep your finger there because we're going to come back to it, okay? Because we're going back and forth now for a little bit. So back to Ephesians, okay? Back to Ephesians and verse 2 and 3 in Ephesians now. See, Paul says, Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I know that you don't. But, you know, when I say stop this or stop that or whatever, I'm not insinuating that anybody's doing anything. But I know that most of the time we all get it wrong. <laughs> so when I say, you know, please stop that, please don't, you know what I'm saying? So it fits somewhere, right? So I'm not, in, so please don't take anything personally about what I'm saying, but take it personal what God is saying. Amen? Yes. I said amen. 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 Thank you. Okay, here we go. All right, so the next thing is this now. In heavenly places in Christ. Listen to this. We spend way too much time obsessing about things of earth. We spend way too much time obsessing about earthly things. Not that there's anything wrong with earthly things. Uh, you know, our son is building a brand new, wonderful, gorgeous house. I mean, it's all, you know, nothing wrong with earthly things and, and toys and lands and property. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But we spend way too much time obsessing about things of earth. Mm -hmm. Way too much time obsessing. We get entangled with earthly cares, financial cares, relationship issues. You know what I'm saying? One of the things that I've learned in 45 years of marriage is how to untangle myself from my wife. I've learned that. 
She just, you know, she would like to bind me, control me. Well, I've learned over 45 years how to break those chains, break those fetters, and just and just relax and be loose. You know what I'm saying? 